Um, okay, so for the second half of the morning session, we're going to start with a talk by Sudi Tang, who's a postdoc at University of Toronto, and he's going to tell us about semi-torque systems with multi-pitch fibers. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So today my topic is semi-toric systems with multi-pinched fibers. So you may have many questions. What is semi-toric system? By the way, uh, system here means integral systems. And what is how can fibers be uh, pinched and how can fibers be pinched multiple times? Uh, basically, this, you know, this title is, is based on a paper on Oxley joined with Joseph Palmer and Edward Pelayo. So let's start. Okay, the outline. Uh, I'll start a definition of integral systems and then some example of toric systems, classifications, and semi toric systems and classification, and some historical review. So I think this is um, this is the right place to scheme the definition of integral system because er I think everyone knows pretty well that in integral system is a synthetic manifold of oops, synthetic manifold with um, Hamiltonian TN action rho from basically this is uh, the the algebra homomorphism from the from the trivial or the or the abelian the algebra TN to the um, to the vector fields of vector field on M. And a momentum map. So this momentum map mu is a smooth map from M to the dual of Tn. Basically, it's, uh, it's just the Euclidean space Rn. So it's a <clears throat> it's a function with n values, n components, smooth function. And the mu is related to rho. Mm. And you're going to see the formula later. <clears throat> So there is a technical assumption that all the critical points we do not want the momentum map mu to have too many too too many critical points. So they should form a null set. They should be measure zero. So um, yeah. So this is not automatic because the SAS theorem says that the critical values are null set. But here we assume the critical points. So this is really an assumption. Uh, integral systems so has it has some properties. Uh, basically, the this is a definition of a momentum map. Basically, so uh, the Hamiltonian the Hamiltonian vector field given by of the moment of the components of the momentum map is given by the the algebra action rho, and this vector field the parallel to the fibers, and all, the, all of these Hamiltonian vector field commute. This is why they give a a billion Lie group action, and all the regular fibers of mu are Lagrangian. This means that this is just a singular Lagrangian vibration. Mu is a singular Lagrangian vibration. So let's take a look at as as some examples, very simple examples. So this is perhaps the easiest example: the harmonic oscillator. R2 is the uh, is a tangent is a tangent bound of R. So basically, the tangent bound of R, and this is the uh, um, location, the the position, and the velocity of the harmonic oscillator, like uh, rotating around the circles. And here, the momentum map is just the square of the distance, and the momentum map image is a half line from zero to infinity, close at zero, open at infinity. So <clears throat> And you can see that Hamiltonian vector fields are, are periodic and are along the level set of mu. And here we have a fixed point, a fixed point. So this fixed point is going to be called the elliptic singularity. Here's another example, a compact example, two sphere and mu momentum map is a uh, height z. In this case, the, the image of mu is uh, from is a closed interval from negative, negative one to to one, and again the the Hamiltonian vector fields are just rotations about the z-axis and they are periodic. So 
yeah, the Hamiltonian vector field act as a circle action. So we have a name for this, we have a name, we call this toric, call this toric system. Um, basically, in these two examples, the Hamiltonian vector fields are periodic and generates the S1 action. And S1 is just the one dimensional torus. So these are just two dimensional examples of toric integral system. In general, toric integral system has a, has a Lie group action by the torus, by the n torus. And we have some examples for n equals two. So dimension four equals two n two times two example. So this is just basically uh, a product, condition product of the S2 example. Uh, what, what, what is interesting is the image is a square, is a polytope, it's a polygon in the, in the plane. Okay. Uh, by the way, the, the, the image then does not necessarily be a square. You can make it, so if you, you um, if you transform, if you transform the mu by, uh, yeah, if you transform mu, you can make the, the square a parallelogram. But this was, will represent the, an equivalent uh, toric system. Okay, now the example is um, a little bit non-trivial example is CV2 with the Fubini study synthetic form, a uh, scalar form actually, and mu is given by this formula. And you can see that the image becomes a triangle, an associated triangle, 945 degrees, 45 degrees. Uh, if you look at the fibers of the momentum map mu, so you, have, you, you can see three different shapes, a point, a circle, and a torus. Uh, basically, these three all torus, zero torus, zero torus, and torus, and two torus. Two torus because the point, the value is in the interior, and one torus because the 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 the, 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 uh, the image is in is on the, the boundary, and uh, the pre image of the corner is a point, single point. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, the corner corresponds to the fixed point of, of the torus action. So basically you have three fixed points and the images of three fixed points. And how do you get the polytope? It's just the convex hull of the fixed of the images of the fixed point. One, two, three. So, so here is a classical classification th theory for the toric systems. Uh, up to the isomorphic. So the isomorphism between toric systems is a synthetomorphism uh, with the diffeomorphism downstairs, a synthetomorphism upstairs, diffeomorphism downstairs, such that this diagram commutes. So this is uh, this is the, a synthetomorphism that sends fibers to fibers. So it's a very natural. Uh, notion of the isomorphism between integral systems. So it should be a simple morphism and should send fiber to fiber. And up to this isomorphism, compact toric system will be one-to-one -one corresponding with the delta down polytopes in dimension n. Uh, and, and it's not just one one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, the, 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 the codomain is the equivalent classes of their down polytopes under the action of the affine integral affine group, AGL. So this is a very classical result by Atia, Guillem, and Sternberg, their in the 1980s. And the polytope is exactly the image of the, of the momentum map. Uh, but what is a their down polytope? So here is a very simple explanation here is basically it's a polytope and every corner is it's just a standard corner if you 
if you take the AGL uh, transformation. So here, this point hope is a delta n point hope because if you take any corner like that, you can transform by by a by a matrix matrix of integer entries and some transformation uh, translations. Uh, the translations would allow to to be a uh, real number distances. So the integral linear part with real translations, you get a standard corner. The standard corner is basically all the coordinates greater or equal to zero. So this is delta point of, and this one, two, three are basic examples of delta point holes. Actually, all the delta point of in dimension two would be uh, would be a blow up, blow up, blow up of these three models. And uh, this that, that would be that's another another theory. So we know very well about the toric systems, and uh, we. Uh, me and the two, the two others have um, started the cemetery system, which is a generalization of the toric system. So uh, let me introduce cemetery system by an example called the generalized coupled angular momentum given by Holoff and Palmer in 2018. So this is a two-sphere with just a standard area uh, area synthetic form on each sphere, but with different radius, different radii, so R1 and R2. And the integral system given by mu is given by the two functions, J. J is basically the, um, the two heights, and uh, H is a rather complicated function, polynomial. So it, it, this uh, example is very interesting because it's not just one example. You can you can tweak these values r1, r2, and s to see very different behavior. So we like these examples. Now we set r1, r2 equal to one, and s is something like 0 0.51 and 0 0.52. So this uh, image look like uh, like I don't know uh, like uh, anyway it is. It's a two gone with curve shape, uh, with curve edges. And this is a two gone. Uh, and if you look look at the, the fibers of mu, what will happen is you still see the torus fibers in the interior, you still see the circle and still see the the point, which the point is called the elliptic elliptic singularity, and this is elliptic regular one, by, uh, by the way. But there, there will be two special uh, locations. I, 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 use, I mark them with crosses, and each cross you can see the fiber is a pinched torus. So this is why we have a pinch in the title. It's a pinched torus. A torus with one circle vanished to a point. And we have two of this kind of fibers. And this kind of point, the, the red points, are called focus focus singular point. So this is a new type of singularity. We've never seen before. Now we, we, ch we change S to one half. Uh, basically, what it, uh, if you change S, you will change the shape of the image and you also move the two cross points. You move the two cross points. So if S becomes one half, the two cross points will be merged to one. But, but this red point will not merge, the red point. Red point will, will just mm, uh, uh, appear in the same level set, same fiber, and you'll see the fiber is a torus pinched twice. With two pinch points. So this is why we have multiple pinched fibers. Okay, so you can see that when we change the parameters, we change the behavior of the integral systems, how it changed. Okay, so compare our new example with toric examples, or toric systems, you can see that, oh, I didn't say xj is periodic, xh is not, 
but in a toric system, all the components are periodic. So basically, xj is is like rotation periodic, but xh may you, you may you may go around and go back, but does not go back to the same point. And here, xh is going from one point to another. It can't be can't be periodic. So xh is not periodic, and has to focus over singularity. And some fibers are pinch tori, and there's no global acting angle coordinates. Basically, this is why the image is not a polygon, and the image yeah is a collision polygon. The last two facts are related. Uh, there is example. This is example of semi-toric system. So a definition: uh, semi-toric if rho integrates to a D group action by by a cylinder instead of a torus. The biocylinder and some technical assumptions J is proper, so you don't see the um, you, you, you don't see the image blow up vertically, and all the similarities are of either elliptic or focus focus type. I need to explain this a little bit. Uh, uh, let me quickly talk about the Anderson theorem. It's um, Basically, this is about the local structure of integral system. Okay, uh, if if you have a fiber, if you have a regular fiber, fiber of all regular points, then you have a very beautiful action angle coordinates, and you, you locally look 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 like, look like a polygon or something. Very very beautiful, but um, oh, it's not poly. It's, not, it's even easier than a polygon. It's standard, but if you have a singular point, you have a single point. Uh, things can be complicated, so we do not want to talk. We do not want to talk about the degenerate single point because that's totally out of this range. So, for but for non-degenerate singular point, the structure locally near that point is very clear. It's classified by Eliasson because we have a standard normal form, uh, and the normal form uh, you can see the cube. Is uh, is a momentum map in under new coordinates. The components you only have four type of comp components: the regular component, elliptic, we have seen before in the harmonic oscillator, and hyperbolic, which we don't discuss and focus focus. So basically, we just give up the hyperbolic and degenerate single point. We don't give up too much. So this is what we say here. And the isomorphisms is a little bit more restricted. Well, it's fine should be a simple isomorphism that sends fiber to fibers, but we also want the phi to preserve the, the first component. So we want to preserve J because J is special, J is periodic. And we want uh, G to, sorry, G to preserve J and G downstairs to preserve the orientation. So this is just technical assumption to, and I just want to say this isomorphism a little bit more restrictive to than the toric case. So our result, we completely classify the same toric system and uh, this invariance a little bit more abstract and more complicated than the toric case. So it's called the marked VPIA the advanced polytosis labels. VPIA is a vertically piecewise Integral affine. Yeah, this, we invented that terminology. Sadly, we invented that. Uh, so, this polytope has three parts. We have a marked VPIA built on polytope. So, that's a polytope. It's a fancier polytope than before, the built on polytope. And we have focus focus label for each focus focus value for each cross. And we have a twisting covector also for each cross. So, let's take a look. Yeah, vertically piecewise integral uh, affine. I know you don't want to read the text. If you want, you can read the text later. Okay. It's a polygon with the affine structure, captures the affine structure of mu m, the image. How do we do that? Uh, so th this is how we do that. So this is the image of the momentum map with two crosses and vertical lines through that crosses. So, let, so we are going to cut cut through the vertical line in two parts. And for each part, now, 
Okay, basically we don't have action angle coordinate because of the crosses. And now we get rid of crosses, we can find the action coordinates on each part. Under the action coordinates, this each part will be a polygon. And magically, magically, we can always glue back these polygons, these here triangles, into a authentic polygon. So this is a polygon, it's a parallelogram. And this is basically our, our polytope we, we, we want. Um, okay, so their land, sorry, their land DPIA polytope means that the polytope, the, 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 the three corners will be same as the their land corners. And the corners through the vertical line, we have two possibilities, either under suitable coordinates, it's either a half line, so this is the case, the half plane, sorry, half plane. Or it would be a standard corner under some suitable coordinates. And we have a mark for each focus focus value. And we have a number for each vertical line. So here the number is, the, is two. This is the multiplicity of the vertical line. So we still have some information, more information than just a delta polytope. And it's called mark delta DPIA polytope. Okay. Uh, so, but one, we, want to look, we want to make a note because as I said before that the delta polytope is not the invariant, it's the orbit under the affine group is invariant. So here uh, the, the polytope is not, polygon is not unique. It's, we need to look at the orbits under the so-called VPIA group. Again, don't read the text. So the VPIA group is generated by the three generators. T is this uh, shear transformation and TTJ is a part, partly shear transformation and it has is a vertical translation, vertical shift. So uh, basically you can apply this operation to that polygon and you get the same poly, you still get a polygon for the same in semi system. Okay, and the focus focus label is for, so every focus value has multiplicity and there's a tuple of exactly k, the same number of formal power series in two variables. And this will capture local affine structure near that focus focus value. But the k power series have different meanings. So let's take a look. This is example five, we have two crosses. And how do we, so we, we look at the folk, the regular values, okay, regular values around that cross. And we take, so tau one is the travel time along xj and tau two is the travel time along xh. What, what does that mean? We start, we start with some point, start with some point and we move along xh until we hit the same orbit of xj. And then we move along xj. So this is a tau two, it's always positive. Okay, this is tau two, the longer one is tau two and similarly shorter one is tau one, is periodic, and S1 circle value. Um, yeah, you can see that uh, uh, unfortunately these two functions, uh, basically these two are functions of the values C, so the, of the regular values. Okay, but these are not uh, well-defined functions in this entire disk, it's a divergence at X. And the uh, tau one even have a monitor. If you go around, you increase by two pi. So these are not good functions. Uh, so we need to modify this by um, so k kappa is a is a is a singular thing, and we 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 take the two functions to to construct a one form, close one form. But this singular, we need to remove the singularity kappa, and we get a smooth one form. And it's close one form, we can find the function S0 vanishing at the cross and which is primitive of the one form. And then we take the Taylor series of S0. So this is how we get the small S0. Okay. okay, and for the example six, we have a one cross, a more complicated cross. So same, same, same recipe, almost the same recipe for S0, but in this case, the monitor is twice as we had before, it's four pi. And, uh, and we have some mysterious item 
G01 pull back here. So uh, roughly speaking, we will remove two copies of the singularity kappa. Okay, by the way, uh, this is proved so these invariants are defined and proved by Zemengong in 2003. It's called the semi-local semi local invariant. And this is proved by Pinario and me, 2018, for multiple pinched case. Uh, G01, G01 is uh, too much text. Uh, this is related to the, the, the deviant morphisms downstairs in the local normal form, aliasing theorem. Theorem. Uh, basically, the different models are different downstairs, different or uh, different similar values. So, and G01 will measure that difference. So, this is how we get G01, and we have G01 here. Okay, so let's quickly go through the last invariant twisting covector. So, this is something captures the damn twist of the trajectory. Uh, basically, roughly speaking, is that you uh, from the focus of the label, you know how you know how to calculate the time xj channels, but you don't know you don't even know if you if xh goes around the, the torus uh, come clockwisely clockwisely or not. So we need to distinguish these two three cases and get three different uh, twisting covectors. Uh, so this is a uh, this takes value in some cotangent space, but uh, in a certain way, but this is just non-canonically identified with integers. So in some sense, it's integers. Okay. Uh, uh, Zudi, so, yeah, probably that's a good place to end. I think you're out of time. Sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry, but uh, yeah. So maybe the, the remaining slides that you have is uh, something good to present in the breakout room. So yeah, if you wanted to say if sorry. you wanted to say one last like sentence to finish the talk, sorry, I don't want to like could just cut you off and end it. But if you want to just like summarize with one sentence and then we'll go to questions. Yeah, it's going to be a very important sentence. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so let's uh, let's all thank Zudi for uh, for his wonderful talk. Um, yeah, so maybe a one one brief question, if anybody had a, a brief question. Um, I had a I had a brief remark, maybe, which is so this system that of uh, Holock and uh, Palmer that you mentioned. Um, I remember when I was learning about this stuff in grad school that I saw some old paper by some physicists that looked like it was studying a very similar system. And I was trying to find it during your talk so I could mention it to you, but I've, I've completely lost this reference. But there were some, there were some physicists at some point who were studying like some similar uh, systems and they were like writing down the classical spectrum and, and identifying the, the focus